गाइस वेलकम टू प्रेप लैडर आई एस यूट्यूब चैनल एंड इन टूडेज भारत ए टू जी सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दिस टॉपिक ऑफ स्टेट वाइज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ अर्थक्वेक्स एंड लैंडस्लाइड्स विल ऑल्सो बी सींग वट आर द रीजन फॉर अकरेंस ऑफ अर्थक्वेक्स एंड फॉर दैट मैटर इवन द लैंड स्लाइड्स इन इंडिया सो लेट स्टार्ट विद दिस द टॉपिक ऑफ अर्थक्वेक एंड लैंड स्लाइड नाउ बिफोर वी अंडरस्टैंड अर्थक्वेक लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड some of the basic concepts which are uh, associated with it all right so what do you understand by earthquake guys earthquake is basically perceptible shaking of the earth caused by vibration which is created within the earth surface within this earth surface between the rocks so what happens is there are certain cracks which gets developed within the earth surface when the crack gets developed the rocks which are present over there these rocks basically create friction with each other so the friction which is created between the rocks results into formation of certain tremors results into formation of certain waves these waves are responsible for earthquake right so how are you going to define it the perceptible shaking of the earth caused because of the uh, vibrations created due to friction between the rocks now it results into formation of body waves and ultimately it is the body waves which are responsible for development of surface waves so this is how you are going to define it so understand one thing in upsc nobody ask you to rectify the definition altogether nobody ask you to mug up that definition altogether rather what you need to understand is you need to remember those keywords first of all remember the keywords and then whatever english which you want to write you can write that way but then make sure that those keywords should come into your uh, definition okay all right so let's see what definition uh, we have written over here earthquake is a violent tremor in the earth's crust it is a violent tremor in the earth's crust sending out a series of shock waves in all direction from its place of origin it constitutes one of the worst natural disaster natural hazard which often turn into disaster causing widespread destruction and loss of human lives all right so here what they are focused more on is how the hazards will occur how, how they uh, it will result what are the consequences of the earthquake and all while we have when we have discussed this definition of an earthquake so on what we have focused more that earthquake is a perceptible shaking caused by body waves and ultimately the surface waves and all so when i use this word body waves and surface waves first of all let me tell you <laughs> the basics of it guys so uh, these earthquake waves are also called as seismic waves these seismic waves always gets created because of the vibration between the rocks as i said now the seismic waves gets divided into certain parts seismic these seismic waves gets divided into certain parts first is body waves and the second is surface waves body waves themselves get divided into two parts p waves and s waves while surface waves gets divided into two parts over here l waves and r waves see p wave stands for primary waves s when s wave stands for secondary waves l wave stands for love waves and r wave stands for relay waves so these are the waves we have body waves and surface waves all right now understand these waves gets created within the surface of the earth so what happens is let's suppose this is the surface of the earth <laughs> so there will be a point within the surface from where these waves will generate so let's suppose a crack got developed within the surface so this crack will end something right somewhere though that friction must have started from somewhere that wave must have got created so when the friction will develop within the rocks over here from everywhere the vibrations would occur and that would create the body waves 
the name body waves itself will tell you this fact that this particular wave generates within the body of what body of the earth when we say there is a surface waves the name itself will tell you that this particular wave gets created on the surface of the earth all right so within the surface of the earth the place where it gets created is called as focus or it is also called as hypo center focus or hypocenter it is focus or hypocenter from where the seismic waves will form now these seismic waves will create vibrations and that will that will come all the way over the surface so when waves will form body waves when they will generate they will travel all the way over the surface see they will always travel like this so this is the motion in which this is the movement of these waves so they will always travel in all the directions but just because you have drawn it over here this way so i'm showing that this wave is traveling all the way at the top so this is nothing but what these are the body waves p waves and s waves all right as soon as it will touch the surface the place where it touches the surface is called as epicenter now see epicenter is the closest point on the surface of the earth from the focus epicenter is the closest point on the surface of the earth from the focus so this epicenter is the one where the surface waves will create now understand this surface waves gets divided into two parts over here l waves and r waves all right so whereas l waves move like they they have horizontal propagation over the surface so whenever l waves form they create horizontal propagation within the surface while r waves create vertical propagation within the surface so there are two types of propagations which develop within the surface one is l waves which create horizontal propagation guys horizontal propagation while r waves which are called as relay waves they result into development of vertical propagation all right r waves are slower l waves are li little bit faster than r waves overall surface waves are slower than body waves now understand this these two waves will get created over the surface in epicenter and whenever they'll get created on the epicenter that will be responsible for formation of earthquake so earthquake kiske wajah se aata hai earthquake gets created because of this l waves and r waves all right to so, horizontal propagation and vertical propagation both of them are highly disastrous and both of them would result into an earthquake so this is something which you need to know before we understand how exactly it gets created earthquake occurs and all all right let's move forward now talking about india over here guys let's talk about india india is highly earthquake prone country why is it so see there are various types of plate tectonic activities which are taking place in the various part of the world among those plate tectonic interactions it is continental continental convergence which results into a high earthquake very high uh, disastrous earthquake over the surface because see whenever uh, let's say we're talking about continental oceanic convergence whenever continental oceanic convergence will take place oceanic plate will subduct below continental plate so here although in this case also earthquake would occur but then one of the plate got subducted so in continental oceanic convergence oceanic plate got subducted so vibrations in this case would be limited why because one of the plate got back down so it it moved downwards because of that it won't be able to create that huge uh, friction among the rocks whenever we talk about oceanic oceanic convergence in oceanic oceanic convergence also one of the plate subducts another another plate to jab bhi koi plate subduct kar jati hai whenever some plate gets subducted within the other plate below the other plate so in that case that particular plate will get that plate will not be able to create a very high vibration as such and that's why these plates over here will uh, uh, will won't be able to create that much friction and the earthquake however whenever continental continental convergence take place so in that case no plate because we all know continental plates are buoyant in nature they are lighter in nature so no plate will uh, will be ready to subduct below the other plate and that's why they end up creating more vibrations within the surface and this results into a very high earthquake india is the country where you can see that there are two plates which are colliding with each other so here there is eurasian plate over here and then there is indian plate which is colliding with the eurasian plate 
so eurasia and india so when this collision takes place this is a continental continental collision which is taking place right it is because of this that the earthquake in india becomes significant but see this is not the only reason because of which earthquake occurs in india there are certain other way other uh, uh, means through which as well the earthquake can occur so continental continental convergence or for that matter any kind of convergence can create earthquake it's just that it is continental continental convergence uh, which will result into much stronger earthquake all right so all right this is continental continental convergence which we have seen <coughs> now next along with that india has also seen another earthquake called as reservoir induced seismicity when i say reservoir induced seismicity that means there was a reservoir somewhere there was a kind of dam structure somewhere or the other and it got burst when it got burst it resulted into isostatic imbalance within the surface that means the surface of the earth maintains its balance because of isostasy whenever this balance gets disturbed because of sudden disruption of any particular landform what did i say whenever this balance gets disturbed because of sudden vibration or sudden destruction of any landform on the surface then earth starts vibrating like this and it results into earthquake in 1967 in india there was a, a dam called as koina in koina region there was a koina dam and this koina dam got burst it got broke down breaking of such a huge dam has resulted into vibration within the surface that is what we call as isostatic imbalance so it is because of this isostatic imbalance the surface started vibrating and that is what we call as reservoir induced earthquake that is the only earth uh, reservoir induced earthquake which we have seen in india till date along with that there is uh, another way through which also the earthquake can occur for example it is said that whenever any volcanic activity takes place every volcanic activity is associated with earthquake whenever volcanism would occur volcanic eruption will take place that volcanic eruption would always be associated with some form of the earthquake or the other either it will be a major one or it will be a minor one but can we say the same thing when the earthquake would occur can we say this that all earthquakes whenever earthquake would come it will always bring volcanic activity along with it absolutely not all earthquake won't bring volcanism however all volcanic activity will bring earthquake that's for sure now see volcanic activity doesn't occur in india much except the region of andaman and nicobar volcanic activity doesn't occur in mainland region and that's the reason because of which this is not a significant factor which results into earthquake in india right in india this continental continental convergence plays an important role in the himalayan region so the states or the region which lies near himalayas they get affected more because of this uh, uh, the continental continental convergence earthquake all right so this reservoir induced earthquake also something which we have seen now there are certain instruments with the help of which we measure earthquake guys there are certain instruments with the help of which we measure earthquake so what are what are they for is there are certain instruments as in there are certain scales the scales are richter scale and mercalli scale so when i say richter scale richter scale as in in richter scale uh, we measure magnitude of the earthquake while in mercalli scale we measure what intensity of the earthquake in richter scale we measure magnitude in mercalli scale we measure the intensity of the earthquake now what does that mean here in richter scale when we talk about the magnitude as a factor so uh, magnitude means the overall intensity or the power of the p waves and the s waves and for that matter how strong the surface waves are but this is strength of surface waves can only be gauged from the overall uh, power of the p waves and the s waves right so richter scale basically measure the overall strength of the body waves and the surface waves 
and while well, while this mercalli scale if we talk about so mercalli scale measures what intensity that means post occurrence of earthquake after the earthquake has uh, gone then after that how much destruction has caused over the surface of the earth be it in terms of economic loss or human loss that loss is basically measured and that measurement of that loss is uh, basically uh, shown in mercalli scale so mercalli scale basically count the losses the destruction which is caused over the surface of the earth while richter scale measures the magnitude over the surface of the earth are we clear with this so we have understood these two factors over here richter scale and mercalli scale now understand if i say a question puchta hu if earthquake is higher on a richter scale does that mean that earthquake is higher on a mercalli scale as well i am uh, watching on youtube over here you tell me whether it is true or false okay and why if it is false or if it is true so what might be the reason please tell me ansari ahir saying no all right theek hai so when i say earthquake is higher on a richter scale does that mean it would be higher on a mercalli scale as well does that mean it would be higher on a mercalli scale as well it is not necessary once again why is it so because let's talk about the desert area if we talk about any desert region then what would happen in that desert area doesn't matter how strong the earthquake is in terms of richter scale but there won't be any destruction because there is nobody living over here or living over there so that's one point in the region which is highly crowded with human beings and the various urbanization settlements are there in such areas if richter scale is lower but then there is a chance that on a mercalli scale it would cause higher destruction are we getting this point okay so this is how we measure that okay that means if the richter scale is high on a mercalli scale it is not necessarily high now let's talk about developed countries and developing countries all right in developed countries if we say in developed countries if we say the earth uh, the the earthquake is higher on a richter scale richter scale pe earthquake is higher in developed countries then over there on a mercalli scale it would always be lower why because in those countries they have always followed earthquake resistant norms while construction of any buildings the town planning in a developed countries are mostly a properly planned one a designed one however in developing countries the situation reverses developing and under developed countries here mercalli scale matters a lot because the infrastructure which is there over here it's quite fragile earthquake resistant norms are not being used in most of the buildings so even if earthquake comes lower on a richter scale it can create high destruction so taking into account richter scale for measuring earthquake for for uh, looking at vulnerable zones of india so that will be a misnomer that will always misguide us and that's the reason because of which we have to take into account mercalli scale not the richter scale so for any developing on the underdeveloped country mercalli scale <coughs> is the important one while for the developed countries it is the richter scale which plays an important role are we clear with this so this is one factor now let's talk about the overall uh, uh, on the basis of uh, its intensity earthquakes are basically divided into shallow focus earthquake deep focus earthquake so when we talk about shallow focus earthquake and deep focus earthquake okay so let's say there is a focus over here and the focus somewhere 300 km into the surface 300 km into the surface and here uh, 30 km below the surface if focus is present over here and here where do you think the earthquake will be more disastrous <coughs> or where do you think the earthquake will cause earthquake uh, uh, will have more intensity so understand this the place where the focus is shallow over there the earthquake will be more disastrous why is it so the reason being yahan par aisa hota hai ki when the waves will get released p waves and s waves by the time they'll come over the surface they'll be able to acquire smaller area so only this much area is the one in which the impact of the earthquake will spread so 
even if its power is relatively less but still the area in which it is creating its impact that area is also very small because of this concentrated energy the destruction would be higher however when we talk about the deep deep focus earthquake so in deep focus earthquake the overall uh, the wave by the time it will reach all the way at the top so it will spread on a larger area so it will spread on a larger area and that's the reason because of which it will get pacified it won't be able to create that much destruction that's why shallow focus earthquakes are more disastrous than the deep focus earthquake that's one thing however who will have more energy who will have more power between these two it will always be deep focus earthquake will be which will get released with the maximum magnitude why is it so this earthquake waves could reach all the way over the top from the 300 km itself is the proof of this fact that the energy with this particular wave was higher while here the earthquake was in the shallow focus so even if energy was less but still it could reach at it would be able to reach at the top it has to cover more distance so it has to have higher energy with it all right ab again aisa koi thumb rule nahi hai ho sakta hai ki here the energy is also high and it is a shallow then though it will be highly disastrous in nature it will create a huge havoc over the surface all right so this is how we this, these are the things which we need to know now anatomy of the earthquake they have mentioned so here focus we have seen epicenter seismic waves you have seen this india is divided into earthquake zones there are earthquake zonation map which is being done in india now understand this this earthquake zonation map of india is done on the basis of mercalli scale not on the basis of richter scale so india has been divided into four seismic zones now four seismic zones are not from zone 1 to zone 5 uh, zone 4 rather they are from zone 2 to zone 5 so always remember this the zonation map of india never starts from zone 1 it always starts from zone 2 zone 2 3 4 and 5 there is no zone 1 as such earlier it used to be zone 1 but then later zone 1 got subsumed into zone 2 all right so understand this guys this is the zonation map of india in which this blue part is shown as a part of zone 2 and as you can see the upper part the place which is close to uh, himalayas uh, that particular place is either lying under zone 4 or zone 5 remember this all of these are demarcated on the basis of mercalli scale <laughs> so zone 4 and zone 5 then zone 3 is there which is remaining part zone 2 and zone 4 ke baad whatever remaining part is there it comes under comes under zone 3 at the same time bhuj region kach region of uh, gujarat it lies under zone 5 and this zone 4 is this particular area this one zone 4 and then even the western part of maharashtra some part lies under zone 4 so this is how the zonation map of india looks so about 59% of the land area of india is liable to seismic hazard damage when we talk about zone 5 it is very high risk zone area liable to shaking intensity 9 and above so it intensity remember intensity that means mercalli scale right so intensity 9 and above it shows zone 5 zone 4 so high risk zone intensity 8 the one which lies under intensity 8 are zone 4 zone 3 intensity 7 this is a moderate risk zone which lies under intensity 7 while zone 2 it's a low risk intense uh, low risk zone which is lying under zone 6 and lower all right next himalayan zone we have seen that the himalayan zone is lying for zone 4 and we have seen the region which is associated with it as well right along with that indo gangetic plain it lies to the south of himalayan zone and running parallel to it most of the earthquakes striking in this zone are moderate intensity of 6 to 6.5 Five, all right, and peninsular zone. See, peninsular zone is mostly a stable landmass except certain areas. It's a stable landmass, and only a few earthquakes have been experienced in this region. Region. It is zone of minimum intensity. Now, what are the hazardous effect of earthquake? See, hazardous effect are loss of life and property, topographic changes, liquefaction, and all. Liquefaction is important. One thing, guys, remember whenever we talk about hazardous effect of any disaster. it should be associated with what
secondary disasters. Whenever a given disaster comes, it would always be associated with secondary disasters. All right. So, what are secondary disasters of earthquake? Can I say earthquake would result into landslide? Absolutely. Liquefaction, for that matter, is one of the part of it. So, earthquake would result into uh, a landslide. Earthquake can also result into flood in some of the regions, isn't it? Earthquake can also result into floods in Uttarakhand. Let's say some earthquake occurs. So, glacial lakes which are created at the top of the mountain, they will burst. When these glacial lakes will burst, they will cause floods in the given uh, villages which are present in the valleys of some of the rivers. So, that is one thing. Along with that, can I say earthquake would result into forest fires? Absolutely. Whenever earthquake occurs, the rocks which are present on the mountain, they start rolling down over the surface. While rolling, they, cause, they can cause friction. Now, in that case, when if, if uh, the moisture in the soil is less, then there is every chance that the foliage, dry foliage, which is present on the ground, that can catch fire and it may result into forest fires. So, always write the secondary disasters associated with any disaster, not just earthquake. What are the NDMA guidelines on earthquake management? NDMA issued, NDM, uh, uh, issued by, the guidelines issued by NDMA rest on six pillars of seismic safety. So, what are those six pillars, guys? Six pillars basically are earthquake resistant construction of new structure, earthquake resistant construction of new structure, that is pillar one. Pillar two is selective seismic strengthening and retrofitting of existing priority structures and lifeline structures. So, there are certain structures which are old, there are certain, certain structures which are extremely important such as uh, uh, Raj Bhavan or a very critical uh, 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 multi-speciality hospital which is present in the given location. So, such areas are considered as a lifeline centers. So, those lifeline, lifeline structures need to be protected. Pillar 3, regulation and enforcement. Pillar 4 is awareness and preparedness. Now, you, would, you may feel that these are the uh, common measures which are already suggested, but then Pillar 3 is a regulation and enforcement is on the part of the authorities, while awareness and preparedness is on the part of people, the community who are living in that given region. So, these two pillars, Pillar 3, Pillar 4, they basically are part of pre-disaster management measures, which we have signed under Sendai framework. Along with that, uh, this uh, 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 Pillar 5 is also there, capacity development and Pillar 6 is emergency response. Now, what are uh, these earthquake resistant construction of new structures? What does that mean? All central ministries and departments and state governments which facilitate implementation of relevant standards for seismically safety design. Now, what are the relevant standards? That how much, how much, uh, uh, how, what kind of earthquake resistant norms would be there? How much intensity the given region can tolerate? See, if you talk about alluvial plains, the intensity which alluvial plains can tolerate will be different with respect to intensity the peninsular India can tolerate for the earthquake. Alluvial soil, the northern plains are soft in nature. So, because of that, buildings can collapse easily over here compared to peninsular India, right? So, the measure of intensity for earthquake resistant norms, that would be different from North India and South India and for that matter, Northeast and the Himalayan states. Selective seismic strengthening. In selective strain, seismic strengthening, as I said, lifeline structures and the old buildings, they need to be made more strengthened. Regulation and enforcement. Implementing, for example, building codes and other safety codes. That in, uh, regulation and enforcement may, some ground rules will be decided. That if earthquake comes, and in that case, whom to protect first and then whom to protect later. At the same time, which buildings are more important Evacuation, if it has to happen, then in which region evacuation will take place, where exactly people are supposed to go and all. After that, awareness and preparedness. Here, in awareness and preparedness, there are certain things which are there in which the very important part is community-based disaster management. So, this CBDM mechanism would also get applied over here. Along with that, capacity development. In capacity development, education, training, research and development, capacity building and Doc, uh, documentation. These are the aspects which will come into it. And along with that, we have emergency response. 
so this is a during disaster measure which will be taken so it doesn't come under uh, doesn't come as a part of sendai framework but rather along with pre disaster measurement we also need to take into account what are the measures we are going to take after the occurrence of earthquake all right next let's move forward challenges of earthquake mitigation what are the challenges or inadequate enforcement of earthquake resistant building codes and towns planning and bylaws absence of earthquake resistant features which are there in india as you can see there are no uh, such uh, uh, buildings which you have enforce basically what happens is if you go in the developed countries over there they before construction of any building they have all the site maps earthquake resistant norms will be followed they have to take uh, permission of requisite authorities and for every construction there are certain architects which would come into picture but then here in, in india what happens is uh, people generally uh, the country is uh, not that rich so because of that we cannot afford architects many people they have uh, the concept of dream house so what happens is in that case they end up uh, in order to save more and more money and to make bigger house they end up uh, uh, spending their money by constructing their own house by themselves so this is the reason because of which the house which they end up making that house does not follow the earthquake resistant norms that is one of the problem whenever earthquake would come then that house may collapse first because of lack of understanding about the earthquake and all so lack of formal training is also one of the issue which we have lack of adequate preparedness and poor response capacity and along with that there is lack of awareness of the various issues as well so that are the these are the problems of earthquake mitigation now the question is <coughs> if the earthquake comes what are the measures we are supposed to take guys what are the measures we are supposed to take see first of all earthquake is something which is very hard to predict we cannot predict earthquake much beforehand recently we have installed one system in dehradun there is one instrument which we have installed in dehradun and later in chandigarh and that particular instrument give earthquake warning 40 seconds before its occurrence 40 seconds before the occurrence of the earthquake so that is something which is important that uh, 40 second before its occurrence the earthquake warning would be given so this is something which is there so that is something which can be implemented in earth now one may say that 40 seconds are not enough it's perfectly fine we have started with 40 seconds over the period of time will improve now how this 40 second warning is will be, is uh, being given see p waves and s waves they travel with the speed of sound so when they get released from the focus so at that point of time electromagnetic signal would be sent the difference in the velocity is huge one travel with the speed of light other travels with the speed of sound and that's the reason because of which the gap of 40 second can be set for this uh, which is uh, uh, which uh, uh, before that will be able to understand the earthquake is going to come along with that there are other uh, measures which can also be suggested for example animal animal behavior can be noticed uh, what we can see is china once could protect its people by just by uh, uh, observing the animal behavior see animals can uh, capture even the smallest of frequencies so in that case if the earthquake is going to come animals would come to know before it so they will be they will become restless if the animals are becoming restless in that case we can always take certain measures right so that is one solution which can be suggested along with that uh, other so earthquake resistant norms can be constructed planning commission once have suggested that the building buildings which would be constructed those buildings should have the pyramidal structure that doesn't mean that exactly pyramids need to be constructed but let's suppose we are constructing building that building should have broad base and the narrow apex why is it so because whenever earthquake would occur and if if at all that building collapses then in that case that building would collapse at the same place where it has got erected to jahan par hai wahi pe collapse ho jayegi so cascading effect can be reduced so it it won't happen this way that the earth, this building would collapse in the nearby buildings and all so that's why this particular uh, uh, construction can uh, uh, reduce the catastrophe that's one thing along with that ball bearing method is also suggested guys ball bearing method so what do you understand ball bearing 
whenever earthquake would come, it is said that if the buildings have ball bearing structure, they would be able to wobble little bit. So, they will be able to absorb the shock waves which are created by the earthquake. So, it is better than the building getting collapsed completely, right? So, ball bearing structure is one of the technology which can be introduced. So, these are some of the solutions which can be suggested for protecting a given region from the earthquake, alright? Let us move towards the next topic called as landslides in India. But before that, let us talk about this question bank 2, question bank 2.0, which we have introduced. Now, on, in this question bank, the questions, around 7000 questions are there. And uh, the questions are both in English and Hindi. Now, when you make, let us say you solve that question, you may, you, you, uh, you, you will not be able to, let us say, uh, mark the right answer. Then in that case, you can always go to treasure. The link will be provided near that particular question. You can go to treasure where the snippets or that particular topic will be given in detail. So, you can read that and you can always plug your problem, plug your issues. At the same time, over there, the link would also be given where you can just click and you can go on the videos uh, which in which the teachers have already, the educators in prep ladder have already taught that particular topic. So, you can watch that video, some part of it and then you can always prepare your uh, week issues, weak points. So, that is there in question bank. So, it is highly modern and uh, technology list question bank which we have created for students. Guys. Next, let us talk about landslides in India. So, what is a landslide? Landslide is a rapid movement of rock, soil and vegetation down the slope under the influence of gravity. So, basically when we talk about landslide, landslide is nothing but a mass movement. It is a mass movement. So, you must be knowing what is mass movement. Mass movement that means down slope movement of sediments that is called as mass movement. So, landslide is nothing but a mass movement which takes place in the impact of gravity. They are generally sudden and sporadic natural removal of soil and rock from the slope is known as mass wasting. This mass movement, mass wasting is same thing. The major cause that triggers landslide. So, let us understand what are the various causes for landslide to occur in a given region? So, first is, first is in India, it is majorly earthquake which can result into landslide. So, whenever earthquake would occur, continental, continental convergence. So, in Himalayan region, you can see that the chances of landslide would be higher. Along with that, deforestation is also another reason because of which landslide can occur. Deforestation and urbanization. That is also one of the significant reason because of which the landslide occurs in India. In deforestation, in the region of Arunachal Pradesh, we can also say shifting cultivation, we can talk about shifting cultivation. So, what happens is whenever you cut down trees and all, so the sediments which are being holding, uh, the, the trees are basically holding those sediments together. But then when trees would cut down, the sediments will become uh, loose and they can always come down the slope. So, deforestation and urbanization, this is one of the uh, cause of uh, landslide. Along with that, seepage of water within the surface. So, uh, cloud burst we can say. Cloud burst can also result into the landslide. Why? Because in a soft soil, when the cloud burst, huge amount of rainfall will take place that water would percolate within the surface. The soil will become loose and ultimately that entire structure would collapse. So, cloud burst can also be another reason because of which the landslide can occur. Stamping, large scale stamping by the mass, stamping by the mass, huge number of people, they are stamping together they are along the mountainous terrain that can always cause landslide. For that matter, war like situations, so let us say some on border some firing is done or uh, uh, because of that, the vibrations may get created within the surface. <coughs> These vibrations can also result into landslides. Along with that, we can say flooding is one of the cause as well as consequence of landslide. Flooding is one of the cause as well as consequence. So, flooding can result into landslide, landslide can also result into flooding. Both are dependent upon each other. So, here, these are some of the reasons which, which, which we can always mention for causes of landslide. As we have seen over here, these are the various causes, alright. 
नेक्स्ट लैंडस्लाइड वलरेबिलिटी जोन फॉलोइंग लैंडस्लाइड वलरेबिलिटी जोन सो इंडिया इज डिमार्केटेड इन टू वेरी हाई वलरेबिलिटी जोन विच इंक्लूड्स हिमालयास अंदमान एंड निकोबार स्टीप एंड रेनी स्लोप्स ऑफ वेस्टर्न घाट्स एंड निलगिरीज द नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न रीजन एंड द एरिया ऑफ इंटेंस ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज सी रिसेंटली देर वॉज अ क्वेश्चन विच वॉज आस्ट दैट रिसेंटली एज इन सम ईयर्स बैक इन यूपीएससी दिस जी एस क्वेश्चन वॉज आस्ट दैट बोथ हिमालयाज एंड वेस्टर्न घाट गेट्स अफेक्टेड बिकॉज ऑफ लैंड स्लाइड इज एन इट हाउ दे आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम ईच अदर सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट हिमालयाज इट्स बिकॉज ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंटल कॉन्टिनेंटल कन्वर्जेंस caused so because of that that the earthquakes which cause over there the earthquake which occurs over there is because of what because of earthquake activities uh, landslide which occurs over there is because of earthquake activities in himalayan region that's one thing the uh, the landslide which occurs in himalayas they are very strong and they are very disastrous in nature because the height higher the height of the mountain more slope more steeper the slope will be and then in that case the earthquake will be much stronger However, in Western Ghats, the height of mountain is relatively uh, small. So here, in this case, first of all, the impact of landslide won't be that big as it occurs in Himalayas. And secondly, landslide in Western Western Ghats is not because of uh, earthquake exactly. Rather, it's more because of deforestation in that particular location. And in some of the areas uh, of uh, Himachal, uh, 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 in some of the areas of Himalayas. and for example in north eastern india and all and in some of the regions of western ghat landslide is also because of a very heavy rainfall landslide is also because of heavy heavy rainfall at the same time the man made activities such as scouring of the land illegal mining activities and all in western ghat this plays very important role for uh, landslides over there and in the same thing can also be mentioned about himalayas but then still it is relatively control Because Himalayas are too precious for us, so it is still relatively controlled as of now compared to Western Ghats. But then it is illegal mining is also taking place in Himalayan region as well. So these are some of the reasons because of which landslide takes place over there. High vulnerability zone. If we talk about, so in that case, the only uh, uh, the, the only difference is that the intensity and frequency of landslides are less over here compared to the earlier one. All Himalayan states and the states from northeastern region, except the plains of Assam, are included under this one. All right. Next, moderate low, moderate to low vulnerability zone. These include areas that receive less precipitation, such as Trans Himalayan areas of Ladakh and Spiti, Aravalli Hills, rainstorm areas of Western and Eastern Ghats, and Deccan Plateau. So these are the moderate zones, and other areas are the one which are mentioned over here. now what are the consequences of landslide as i have always mentioned whenever you write about any particular disaster always mention the secondary disaster associated with it always mention the secondary disaster associated with it so consequence of landslides are obstruct flow of water and causes flash flood then hindrance in the rail and road tra road traffic uh mix spatial interaction difficult casualty water scarcity in the downstream region and all because water is being stopped right so these are some of the consequences now there are certain ndma guidelines such as monitoring and the early warning system uh, controlled blasting method is also one of the method which is <coughs> suggested by ndma that the uh, the places first of all we have to uh, we we need zonation map of the vulnerable areas now once we know it then go to, go over there and also understand what uh, how we can perform control blasting control blasting will remove the sediments which uh, can cause landslide on a large scale so that is one solution which is suggested by the ndm restriction on the construction and other development activities on the critical areas along with that large scale afforestation program and construction of bans terrace farming retaining walls code for excavation construction and grading and along with that arrangements for landslide insurance and compensation these are some of the steps which are there now what are the existing challenges which we have in landslides integrating landslide concerns in the development of disaster management plans that is a issue see compared to other disasters which we uh, face in india landslide is relatively given lesser importance so that's issue techno techno legal reg uh, regime 
for the introduction of sound slope protection, planned urbanization, regulated land use and environmental friendly land management. Along with that zero tolerance against the deliberate environmental violence. The problem and this is, uh, recently we know that the problem of shifting cultivation is there in the Arunachal Pradesh. But then little has been done in order to stop the problem of the shifting cultivation in that location. So, it is high, it's high time that we should uh, rehabilitate and resettle the tribal people so that they would reduce the overall uh, uh, deforesting activities over there which will reduce the overall landslide activity. Now, there was a question which was asked in 2019, disaster preparedness is the first step in any disaster management process. Explain how hazard zonation mapping will help disaster mitigation in the case of landslide. So, try this question at home guys. Again, question bank 2, I have already uh, mentioned the benefits of it, right. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know, I am available guys. Shiv Chandra has asked why some region of India and Guj, uh, Gujarat and Maharashtra are under. See in Gujarat and Maharashtra, when Indian plate has moved towards north, let's suppose I will draw it over here. When Indian plate was moving towards north, so when it, has, when it has collided with Eurasia, some crack got developed in India. These cracks have got developed like this. So this was the first one. So, this was the first crack which has got developed, then second crack got developed towards uh, Arabia and third crack got developed over here towards Tapi, Godavari and all, Tapi and uh, Narmada. Now, because of these cracks, now what happens is whenever one of these cracks remains active, it is said that the crack which is present near Aravli, uh, sorry, Arabian region that is still active, whenever vibrations develop over here, it results into earthquake in Gujarat region. And that's why it is still under zone 5 because it lies very close to it. The reason why this lies under zone 4 is because of the reservoir induced seismicity which we have seen. In subduction, why plate? One plate are not broken or cracked. Why would it get broken? See, if one plate gets subducted completely, then in that case it will get subducted. Why would it crack? Why would it develop a crack, right? And if somebody is not subducting in that case, they will always push each other upwards. So, for example, in continental oceanic, continental, continental convergence, one of the plate would go down and then it will push other plate up. Plates are too big actually. Lithospheric plates are too big to develop cracks in them. So, cracks won't occur. Not to say cracks won't at occur at all. Whenever cracks will develop, that particular part of the plate would break down and it would collapse. This occurs when continental oceanic convergence takes place, this does occur. So, here let us talk about, see, in continental oceanic convergence, when this continental plate and oceanic plate collide with each other, what happens is some part of continent breaks down. At the same time, some part of oceanic sediments, they also come over here. Because these plates are colliding with each other, the crack got developed in the continental plate and it breaks down. This is also one of the reason why we have a lot of sediments over here. And when the convergence between these plates takes place, this compressional force results into formation of fold mountains. So, that is how basically the fold mountains develop, right? Magnitude that means overall in uh, power of the P waves and S waves and for that matter surface waves as well. Akshay? Alright guys, thank you. Thank you so much. We will stop here today.